the focus of what we're what we're all about in this presentation is to ask answer some questions here that have to do with with making sure the specifying world out there knows that, that we're serious about the approach we're taking and providing them with the tools necessary. In, in, in addressing uh, contemporary and traditional fixtures as we are and, and architectural relevance, we've got three questions we're going to ask here. One of them is what makes a lighting fixture architecturally relevant? What separates contemporary from traditional lighting fixtures? And, and the most important one, why do US architectural and Sun Valley fixtures make more sense? We can win the end of this webinar within the next 30 seconds by saying that an architecturally relevant fixture looks good with the buildings. A contemporary versus traditional is uh, just looks like a newer fixture versus an older one. And you can make more money with US architectural and Sun Valley lighting. And uh, that's the end of our webinar. We can finish it here. <laughs> no, don't, don't hang up, seriously. The, uh, in, in the final analysis, it, it really is that simple, but how we get there is probably a bigger deal. And, and in reality, when we look at all three of those questions about architectural relevance, the understanding contemporary versus traditional lighting, and what are the unique characteristics about our company, it all comes down to one big thing, dollars. None of us are doing this for charity. We're all doing this to earn a paycheck, and in, in, in some instances, uh, to to earn a good paycheck, um, but we're doing it because we like the industry that we work in and we're trying to take a message across and make, make, make an income in the process. And so it all ultimately comes down to dollars. And understanding these various parts of, of promotion and product development and getting a message to the field is key to, that, to the success of, of, of that effort. We'll start with architectural relevance. Architectural relevance in its most basic form that we think of is fairly simple. We want the fixtures or the design of the fixtures to, the relate, to relate to the surrounding architectural aesthetics. Contemporary building, contemporary fixture, traditional building, traditional fixtures. But it goes a little bit further than that and getting right down into the detailing of the fixtures or the product itself. The overall assemblies, be they the fixtures, the arms, the poles, the bases, and all of the other accoutrements like banner arms or, or, or flag holders or whatever the case may be, need to show a continuity in the design so that what you see is a complete assembly, one that's unified as a whole. It doesn't look like parts and pieces of hardware that have been put together. And unfortunately, in order to satisfy the needs for some type of traditional looking fixture, we find today a real hardware style approach that many manufacturers have taken. It's not the case with this company. In addition to that, when we look at the definition of what is traditional and what is contemporary when it comes to architectural architecture and when it comes to lighting fixtures, when we think of traditional architecture, we think of styles and such that have much more ornateness, if you will, more detail, more styling into them, you know, ranging from the uh, Supreme Court of the U.S. here down to the the Wembley residence in Santa Barbara in the lower right-hand side, we see a variety of neoclassic or Victorian or prairie-style architecture, all of which is marked, marked by, by extreme attention to detail. Now, when we look at contemporary architecture, the detail is there, but it takes a slightly different form. It takes a far more geometric form and shape, where we're taking geometric shapes, round squares, angles, and such, and putting them together in a structure that, that it's different, but it smacks of a different type of, of, of look, a much more contemporary look. And when we select, see lighting fixtures selected to accomplish the purpose behind these, we expect to see the same thing. Traditional lighting fixtures tend to be something that is fixtures that are a little more ornate in the characteristics. There's more detailing to the, to the hubs that the acorns mount on, for example, or the cages that are around the globes. When we look at the lanterns, the detailing to, the, to either spikes or scrolls or, or badges or flags on them, uh, the, the hub collector assemblies down at the bottom, the different types of glass and such, there's a variety of different elements that go into these fixtures probably because they reside more at a, resi at a pedestrian scale level, where it's more intimate to the, the viewer walking through an area where these fixtures reside, there, there's more detailing to them. When we look at contemporary lighting fixtures, we see a lot more geometry, shoeboxes, hockey pucks, angular forms, and, and some, some more eclectic forms of, of 
geometry where we're combining a number of these elements into a single shape, but much more clean line, much less detail, individual detail in these fixtures. Today's architecture and some architectural styles of the, of the past couple of decades has really smacked of something even more different than just a plain contemporary building as we saw in some of the earlier examples. And it gets down to art, or excuse me, architecture as sculpture. Uh, there have been hints of this in the past, such as the Guggenheim Museum in the lower left-hand corner and the Air Force Academy Chapel in the middle. But as we look at some of these other forms and these newer buildings that we see coming up, it really comes down to sculpture. And when it comes to selecting lighting fixtures to go along with these forms of architecture, we really tend to get all over the place because we need to find different shapes and different type of modernistic elements in order to reflect the look of, those, of the buildings around us. And, and make no mistake about it, it's very important for the lighting fixtures to reflect the architectural context of the project itself. Using, for example, the Opera House in Tenerife and the Canary Islands, uh, recently completed within the past five, five to seven years, as an example, when you look at this building from the seaside or from the, the Bay Area, it has a strikingly sculptural type of look to it, a very elegant looking building, unlike anything else out there. But when you go to the other side of the building to the access road, it looks like they got lost in the selection of fixtures. What could be more anachronistic than to take a traditional acorn with an ornate pole and put it as a lighting element on the roadway leading up to this building? just doesn't match. And so it becomes very important for us to understand how do we solve the solution, how do we come up with a solution to this problem. Compounding this issue today is the move towards more and more contemporary or cutting edge lighting elements such as LEDs or induction fluorescent, but particularly LED today. When we look at the various styles of LED products on the market, none of them have any type of uh, architectural feel or context to them. They're all very industrial in their look and their design. Uh, reminiscent of waffle irons and toasters more than anything else, not so much buildings. And compounding that issue is that they are specific to the light source. In fact, out of the fixtures that you see here, only one of the fixtures has the capability of using both LED and HID light sources in, in, in its shape. And so the specifier is really stuck with a, a problem here. How does he go about selecting a fixture that is both architecturally relevant and reflective of the current move and the current current styling or current technologies that are out there for light sources? This is where U.S. Architectural in Sun Valley is stepping in. And we want to show everybody that we understand what makes a fixture relevant, what separates the two styles from each other, but most importantly, the question, why do U.S. architectural and Sun Valley lighting fixtures make more sense, is where we want to focus our attention. We get it. We understand it. When we look at the, the world of fixtures today, look at traditional fixtures, for example. Start with those. There's really three basic elements that make up the traditional fixture marketplace. There's probably 80% of and to 90% of the products out there are based on three styles. They're based on either the acorn, the coach lantern, if you will, or an RLM dome. Now, interestingly enough, the acorn and the, the lantern, the coach lantern, of, and it doesn't have to be a coach lantern, but that's a basic shape to it, are both come out of the era when we were using gas as a primary light source. The RLM dome smacks of, of mankind's step or civilization's step into electricity, using the, the top portion of the fixture to hide the um, the lamp shell or the screw shell for the, for the lamp, and then the bottom of the fixture as a reflector and also to contain the, the light source itself. And when we look at the way traditional fixtures have grown up over the years, what we see are variations on those two themes in particular, and of course the RLM dome, but, but the stylings that we see in the acorn and lantern genres take on just the basic shape, and then they're all design elements that detail up the fixtures because there isn't much else to do to them. Interestingly enough, when we move into a more contemporary look in both of these styles, what we see is a carryover of the theme. Acorns become globes, lanterns become various styles of contemporary looking lanterns, but the theme is the same with some contemporary feel to them. 
one fixture, though, hasn't really changed much. And that has, that's the, the, the knob and shade style fixture that is embodied by the RLM dome. And it's interesting because when we look at that basic shape and see how it's interpreted today, it makes a lot of sense for the light sources that we're using. Now, we are going to be talking about our DS series, which is based on this knob and shade style approach. And we wanted to show you how we got there and why this fixture has such a broad and sweeping application potential for it. When we look at the, 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 the knob and shade style fixture, the top portion of the fixture where the, which used to be just a socket, makes perfect sense now to house the electrical components, the drivers, the ballast for whatever light source that we're using. The shade portion becomes the, the element that hides the optical assemblies, whatever they may be. And there's, there, there can be a wide variety of them. In addition to this, that knob and shade style fixture takes on a different character depending upon the arm, pole, and base assemblies that they're associated with. If you take a basic fixture and put it with a contemporary arm and pole, you get a contemporary assembly. If you take the basic fixture and put it with a more decorative or ornate pole and arm assembly, you have a more traditional looking fixture behind it. And that's one of the beauties of this, this style of luminaire in the architectural market and in the lighting market today. And so with that thought in mind, we took a look at the DS series to complete it in a number of areas, both in the aesthetic side and also in the optical side to present for you a complete palette of tools to work with in calling on the specifier. What we did, and we now, now we're going to show you the building blocks of the DS series, but this is not how you specify the fixture. It just shows you the components that go into the overall uh, product line. You start off with the knob portion of the fixture, or what is really the ballast housing, which you can get in a variety of different styles, either lit or unlit, and with decorative bands or without. And we attach to that a number of different shades, of varying shapes, angled, convex, and so, and so forth. In fact, probably more shade variations than any others in the marketplace today. Now, if we were to pull a hundred or ten specifiers out there, we could probably come up with another half a dozen of these shapes. But these become the basic core elements that we, we can vary from. And when you see all of the options that are there, we'll find that for the most part, they'll fit probably about 90% of the buildings that we're working with or the, the architectural context we're working with. Now, every bit as important as the aesthetic elements are the, the lighting components, if you will, that go within the aesthetic elements to perform the actual task. Whether we're working with the a more decorative uh, form of illumination that you get in a linear prismatic uh, jelly jar uh, or within a polycarbonate or glass refractor, or if we're working with performance-oriented optics in the case of a horizontal or vertical lamp segmented reflector system, or even stepping into the world of LEDs, we want to make sure that the product line had all of the components necessary and relevant to it, both from a styling point of view and from a performance point of view to satisfy the needs of, of, of every project out there. And so we present to you the new DS series, the reformed DS series, neoclassic area luminaires from US Architectural and Sun Valley Lighting. And interestingly, we're, if you notice, we're showing this catalog with both logos on it because we're really crossing over both disciplines within the company. The fixture itself is coming from the US Architectural family of products, but the poles and arms can come from either, either the contemporary side or the traditional side. And so contemporary relevance is combined with traditional elegance to give us a wide selection of product. Now in the catalog that we're going to show you to, in order to understand what you're getting here with the DS series, before we analyze the catalog itself in detail and the content of it, we're going to show you how it's laid out. Because the layout of the catalog is very, import, very important to getting across the thought of the product line, since it is such a visual product. Everything that's done in this catalog, and it's a 64-page catalog with 52 pages devoted to just the fixture models, everything that's laid out in here is done on a two-page spread to allow you to get a nice broad overview of the product line. And here's an example of it. When you open the front cover, you're presented with an overview of the individual components that essentially are like the building blocks of the fixtures, and then the table of contents which guides you to the various styles, uh, the various fixture models on the right-hand side shows you the pairings that are there. And what you see here are 12 different pairs of fixtures, 
each pair having four pages devoted to it, and then the DSS series, which is a, a whole other unit in itself with four pages devoted for a total of 52 pages devoted to these models, a lot of information contained in the catalog. You then go on to a presentation of the the what the combination of the aesthetic elements present to you with a couple of pages of photographs of various projects, be it residential or streetscape. There's also some commercial and infrastructure type projects there. After that, we have a two-page spread showing you the performance elements within the fixture, going from the segmented reflectors to the, the LED optical systems, and those are presented to you in a fashion. And for the first time here, we're exposing to you uh, a type of LED module using LEDs as primarily just a light source, the LED power tower module, which is then controlled by either the linear glass diffuser or a polycarbonate or glass refractor to impart its, its optical performance to it. Then we get into the actual fixture pages or the models themselves. And what you have is a two-page spread with photographs, dimensions, EPAs, weights, and then a, the, the specification, written specification for the fixtures, as well as the configuration for the, the either ordering or specification of it. And then two pages for that particular pair of fixtures that show base pole arm configurations that can go along with the fixtures at varying mounting heights and styles to give your specifier some ideas or some thoughts on how to combine all the various forms that go in here. Now let me point out that to be most effective in working the DS series with your specifiers, they really need to be working from both the DS series catalog that you see here and the Sun Valley binder, the pole and base and arm section of the binder in order to get the full breadth of what's available for this product line and what works. Towards the back of the catalog, you then have your lamp electrical guide that covers both electronic and core and coil ballasts and metal halide, high pressure sodium, and then LEDs with their associated driver ratings. And then there's a combined optical system electrical component specification page. Now what we've done is to put the optical electrical spe written specification back here on one page as a combined element simply to save space on the earlier pages, and when we look at a close-up detail of that, you'll see why in a moment. You know, the DS series catalog is, is really a labor of love. It took a lot of time here in order to pull together all the various elements because this was spread across a number of different catalog pages before, and there were also some gaps to fill in, and we're not going to go through all of those that were there, but in order to fill out the entire family of products, there are some, some configurations or models now that are relatively new that you can get to that you couldn't get to before. So let's take a look at the DS series catalog and a little more close up view to appreciate the various elements that are there. Once we go from take the front, turn over from the front cover, we get to the overview page that shows us the individual elements with a little little statement, mission statement of the product line and, and the aesthetic and performance options that are there. We go to the table of contents page and pull you a little closer in there to notice that for each fixture pairing, not only do we have the reference page to you, but we give you your maximum wattages in both HID and LED that's allowable for that system, which can help your specifier isolate down to which model he, would be, he or she would be looking to, to, to work with. Then we go to four pages of photographs of various projects broken down with more residential, streetscape, infrastructure, and commercial elements to it. And this way we can try to inspire the imagination of, of, of the specifier, be he an architect, an engineer, or a landscape architect, uh, or perhaps even a developer as to the variety of possibilities that are available to them here. On the performance pages, we show you both vertical and horizontal lamp optical systems and the fixtures that those are available in with the array of wattages that they're available in. And if you notice, in keeping in context with today's thrust into more modern light sources, we're working not only with medium base and mogul base HID lamps, but we're also working with G base and PGB, PGZ base lamps, which means ED28, ED17, and um, T lamps, T9 and T6 lamps throughout the series. Now, it's not possible for us in doing this catalog, in order to keep it to any reasonable size, 
to be able to include every possible lamp ballast variation. We'll show you on the configuration portion of the fixture pages where there's a note that it tells you to consult us if there's another variation that's being looked for. But for example, there may be a wattage or two that we don't show in either high pressure sodium or metal halide that we know is available out there. Or there may be a lamp type that's available. For instance, we have included with this series the Philips CDM Elite lamps, the 210 and 315 watt T9 lamps, but we haven't included all of the Cosmopolis lamp series and they're just for sake of size uh, 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 as far as the pages are concerned. On the LED pages, we show you the, the ever-present VLED module with its, with its performance ratings and approximate uh, uh, wattage replacements. And then we show you the LED power tower module. Now again, in using the power tower module system, and we're going to hear more about this as we go down the road. In approximately another um, uh, 45 to 60 days, we are going to introduce this as a separate catalog, just like we did the VLED, because it is a complete optical system, primarily for uh, traditional fixtures. It's complete and different and, and very, very flexible in application. But in its simplest form that you see here, we're using it in the DS series for both the clear tempered glass linear prismatic diffuser to create a type 5 pattern or we take that same array of LEDs and put it behind a polycarbonate or glass refractor to produce a more controlled light source uh, in a refractor style fixture. So you have that option there available to you as well. Now, we're showing you a maximum wattage here. If you need to just step it down for lower mounting heights, it's possible to. But again, it's an example of not showing you every last thing possible simply for sake of size of catalog. And then we go through the individual fixture pages with photographs, line drawings with dimensions that are to scale, um, written specification and configurations, and various combinations that again are to scale to give your specifier an idea of some of the things that are possible. So let's use, for instance, the DSAP and DSDP series, which are the, the angle shade and dome shade with the performance reflector optics in it, we're going to use this page to study it a little bit closer. Now, when you look at the first page that's there, you notice that you have maximum wattages listed along with the EPA values that are on them. And then when we come over to the, the written specification port page, we've, we have broken down for you in the written specification five different elements, the housing, the mounting, the optics, the electrical, and the finish. On the optics and the electrical, we say refer to page 62 for those written specifications. We're going to take you over there in a moment, and you'll see why. If you look at the way this is laid out on the page, we had a limited amount of space here in order to do it. As we slide on up, you can see that you have a, a variety of checkboxes to be able to make your selection of lamp ballast wattage, uh, voltage configurations, reflector combinations possible as well as mounting styles, finishes, and other various options uh, for the fixture type, or for, for, for uh, optioning off the fixture to, to achieve other, other goals or aims there. When you move away from this page, you then go on to the suggested combinations for DSAP and for the DSDP. Again, we pointed out to you before, we have the lamp electrical guide that's available, uh, and we're going to look at, a little closer at this in a moment. And then we have the optical and electrical system specifications. Now, if you recall, we were looking there at the DSAP a moment ago. On that page where it says refer to page 62 for your, your optical system specification, well, under the HID column, the reflector module that's shown here, you would use this third paragraph down to pick up your a reflector or optical system specification component. Then slide down two more paragraphs. And you see, for, again, for the DSAP, your electrical component specifications for that fixture as well. And that would then complete your written spec. If you had made a selection that involved LEDs, then you would come across the page to the other pair column, which would involve the optical module, or the VLED optical module, or the tower module. And then at the bottom would be the specification for the driver component there. And again, we did this as a consolidated specification page simply in order to save space on the individual fixture pages. Otherwise, we would have had an encyclopedia here instead of just a thick catalog. We then go to the back cover of the catalog, 
which completes the look of the the entire fixture line. So, yes, we have quite a quite an array here that we're doing, uh, or quite a quite an, uh, an abundant amount of information within the uh, DS series catalog in order to achieve our aims of getting across to you the complete flexibility within this product line and the capabilities that are there. And again, as we said, don't forget that we want to include as well the usage of the Sun Valley pole base arm pages in order to enhance the, the application flexibility of this fixture. Now, when we take a look, for example, at the, at the bases that are available, there's over 85 to 100 various single base pole or split base combinations available, along with straight, tapered, smooth, fluted, stepped, cast, whatever the case may be, 8.12.16 point flutes uh, in the way of poles. By using this tool, the Sun Valley pole bases, the Sun Valley uh, arms, the US Architectural DS series in various combinations, you can achieve combinations that no one else can get to in a wide variety of literally thousands and thousands of potential fixture combinations are available. Now the DS series catalog capabilities that enhance what we've been doing with the heirloom collection and tsunami and involving as well the VLED optical system uh, within it. And it's very important that we realize the power that this puts in your hands and the specifier's hands. We're going to give you an example of it here. Let's say, for example, we're going to use that DSAP that we looked at a few moments ago, the, uh, the angled shade with the reflector assembly in it. Your specifier starts his project off doing some, some uh, pedestrian walkways on the project. So he selects the DSAP1 fixture with a 100-watt metal halide pulse start um, lamp, 277 volt, and a type 2 reflector. Goes out into the parking area, and because of the size of the parking area, you're using 25-foot poles, and he selects the DSAP25, same look and fixture, just larger, in a 400-watt metal halide configuration. But you know what? Today's marketplace, we really need to be looking for a way to save energy. And so either the owner or the demands of the city or perhaps it's a public works job and the demands of the, of the utilities come back to them and say, we want to use something more modern in the way of a light source, but we want to stay within the architectural context of what we have. Very simple to do. Take the pedestrian scale, move on down to the 64 LED module, VLED module, check that off, and you're done with the pedestrian scale products. But there's a challenge on the larger fixture. Because we can go down and select the 120 LED modules, but as we all know, when we start to get into some of the larger, taller mounting heights, it gets a little bit, a little bit challenging to be able to hit the light levels we want and keep our costs under control. Not a problem. Let's take another approach. What we've been using, what we're selected here, is the 400 watt Polestar Metal Halide ED28, 40,000 lumen lamp, 20,000 hours. Total system draw 452 watts with a, with a corn coil ballast. You know what? There's a better way to go and keep it within the framework of metal halide, which will keep the cost of the job under control and still give you the horsepower you need to light the site from the same pole locations and still give you an energy savings that, is, that, that, that would make the use of LEDs not, really effic not, have, not have good efficacy to them. The 315 watt. Philips CDM Elite Lamp is a T9, which will give you actually better performance than an ED28 bulb will. Even though it's 36,000 lumens instead of 40, that less bulb interference creates a cleaner pattern. You, can, you, can, you won't have to change your pole locations. But even more importantly, with the electronic ballast to control in them, you'll have better color over the term the life of the lamp, better light levels over the life of the lamp, and you'll be doing it for a 20 to 25 percent reduction in power because this system only draws 340 watts as opposed to 452. And now at this point, it makes sense to just move that selection on down to the 315. And guess what? You haven't changed a thing. Your pole locations are the same. Your fixtures are the same. Your bases, your arms, everything's the same. The look of the job is the same. You haven't compromised it at all to stay within the architectural relevance that you started with but using the contemporary sources. That's the power that you have in the DS series. That's the power that you have within the Aeroloom and the Tsunami series and the direction we're going with all of the product lines within the new US architectural and Sun Valley lighting.
So the question that we asked earlier, why do US architectural and Sun Valley lighting fixtures make more sense, isn't the right question. The real question is, why does US architectural and Sun Valley lighting make more sense as a company? Here's the reason why. We get it. We understand what it means to have architecturally relevant product. More importantly, we're proving by the products we've come out with, both site and also area lighting, that we are on the cutting edge of the design community, understanding what the architect is looking for, and putting within those designs outstanding optical performance and superior flexibility by using a wide variety of light sources, corn coil, electronic, HID, LED, whatever the case may be, we can do it and maintain the architectural continuity of the project. And by doing all of this, what US Architectural and Sun Valley Lighting is doing is showing our commitment to innovation in outdoor lighting and becoming the new leader in this field. Because if you notice the products that we showed you, the, 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 the four elements there, the DS series, the heirloom collection, the tsunami, the VLED, those have all come out in the last 12 months. If we take a step back and go into the prior six months before that and add into it the tornado bollard, the camber fixture, and all of the other advancements that are being done within this company, it becomes obvious that U.S. Architectural and Sun Valley is really putting its best foot forward in taking lead in innovation in the outdoor lighting marketplace. And the latest addition to that, or the latest proof of that, is in the DS series product line and catalog that you'll be receiving shortly. We thank you for your time and attention to this presentation. That concludes today's webinar. And uh, you'll be looking for this catalog and for the information to come to you shortly. Again, thank you for your attendance. And that'll be an end to this presentation.